Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about a problem that people frequently experience. Most of us own some kind of smartphone or other phone and that involves the use of a phone cable. So this here is a cable for an iPhone. This is one of the later generation iPhones that has this connection as you can see here. Frequent problem with these cables is failure. After repeated plug-ins and plug-outs, eventually the cable fails, and it commonly fails right about here, where there's a lot of flexion and repeated flexion and extension going on here. And what ends up happening, and what I've done is, you know, I've had several of these already fail on me, and it gets expensive after a while. These cables are, uh, can cost quite a bit of money. So um, what I wanted to show you is a quick um, fix. So I cut one open. This is one of the ones that I had that had failed. And I want to just show you where it failed. Because when I was jiggling it at different points, it would connect and disconnect from the phone. So uh, what I did is use a small pair of scissors. Ideally, these small makeup scissors uh, work really well. And... Uh, I'm just going to see if you can see this close-up of it. But anyway, um, let me see if I can get in there focused. Maybe if I do it like this, you'll be able to see it better. Maybe I'm too close. There you go. But the that red wire has completely broken. And the outer... Uh, metal wire that encircles the inner wires has also completely failed and just separated and I found that when I was pushing it together it was connecting intermittently and then disconnecting again. The other point where you can get failure is where it plugs into the wall but that seems to be less of an issue. You can see some fissuring of the outer cables, the outer, outer layer, but the inner layer, the inner wires are still intact. So, um, let's see how we can fix this. So, after using a small pair of scissors to remove the, uh, the, the rubberized coating, the rubberized material that coats this, that coats this, this cable, you have that. The next step is to solder the small wires that are broken together. And let's do that. Before I could do that, I found I had to cut away the thicker part just where it joins onto the connector. So I had to basically cut this part away. I used the same small scissors to, to cut that off like that. The next is to cut away this part right here. Okay, I've cut that piece off as you can see here and you can see the broken red wire the green wire and the white wire are intact and the outer layer is also breached. So basically what I have to do is now fix the red wire and fix the outer layer. I'm going to fix the red wire by soldering those two pieces together and then I'm going to fix the outer coating by using aluminum foil and wrapping it around it. And then in the final step I'm going to put shrink wrap on that and heat it up to seal the shrink wrap and to make, make it more firm. So let's go ahead. Okay, the uh, red wires are now stripped and ready to be soldered together. I'm holding the red wires together with a pair of helping hands. That's imperative to do this. Okay, um, I'm done soldering it, so let me just show you that. There's the solder joint. For the, for the broken red wire. Now I'm going to coat that solder joint with uh, hot glue. So that's the next step. Decided to change my strategy here and instead of use hot glue, which I figured would melt when I apply the heat shrink material to it, what I did is use the old uh, casing 
for the wire. This is the old uh, rubberized material that goes goes around it. Just this stuff. And what I did is I I wrapped that around it, around the broken the uh, solder joint for the red wire, as you can see here, and overlapped the edges of it a little bit. And then I found a, a new use for for magnet wire, apart from making Tesla coils. Here you can use the uh, magnet wire. This is like 26 gauge magnet wire. Just wrapped it around that to hold it, and then just knotted the ends together like that. So now I have an intact red wire and all I need to do now is heat shrink this. So that's what we're going to do next. Before heat shrinking though, what I need to do is add some aluminum foil around this to act as shielding material because it looks like all this this material is broken here. So I'm going to add some it's just some baking foil and I'm going to do that to both ends. So let's do that next. Here's my thin uh, sheet of bacon foil here. I just cut a thin strip of just regular aluminum foil. Well, it's wrapped around the broken portion of the wire where the insulation has been cut loose and where the outer portion of the uh, cable is breached. And it's, it's wrapped around with this uh, baking foil as such. And then you can kind of press it into place to make sure that it fits, that it fits well. Now I applied the uh, heat, shrink, heat shrink tubing to it and get the different sizes from Radio Shack. Just positioned, I cut it um, to the right length to just cover the areas where we'd um, expose the wires and we're about to heat this up. Just did one end, now I'm going to do the other end which is the end that had the broken wires in it. So let's turn it back on. Here it is. The heat shrink is now on. And there's the final product, which is a uh, cable, and we'll test that in a second to see to make sure it's working. I just tested this this cable, this repaired cable, to see if it uh, can charge up the phone, and that seems to work fine. Wire via any uh, USB phone adapter. Now I'm going to try it for data, and it should uh, beep a couple of times and come up with the phone icon and data. So we'll see if that works. There it goes. It's just brought up my uh, Dropbox, which means that it's uh, recognized the data part of the phone. And we're going to check that right now, showing the internal storage. And there's the data in the phone. So yep, it's working fine. Well, thanks for watching.